Hello, welcome back to the channel. Something a wee bit different. So today I'm going to take a bit of a deep dive into the first War Games magazine I ever bought. So August 89. I was in high school and this isn't the uh, the actual one I had. The one I had came apart in over the years being much read and moved houses and stuff. So War Games Illustrated 24. To actually go on and prefer miniature War Games as a magazine back then. I think I prefer War Games Illustrated. Actually, I prefer War Games Soldier and Strategy these days. Uh, things to note, price £1.30, which is about £3.50 in today's money, according to the Bank of England Inflation Calculator. So one of the first things I noticed when I was opening up, which delighted me, was the advert for Claymore. Obviously, I've just visited Claymore. I've just did a show report on Claymore, so I'm going to talk a wee bit about that. Battle Honours there. It's really interesting to see the sort of big players in the war games world back then and, and who the big players are in the war game world just now. But let's have a look at this advert for Claymore. So Saturday 5th of August, so they've maintained the same weekend. Uh, even though they have changed venue, I notice. Uh, now, what we have going on here, so Tentle 430, admission a pound. Ad admission this year was a fiver. Uh, in aid of the Scottish National Institution for War, war Blinded. Really good to see that they had a veterans link back then. This year and the other years I'd been, I remember Safa having a um, like a, a tombola going on there. Safa is a veterans charity up, up here in Scotland. So traders, so these are the key traders, connoisseur figures, tabletop games, keep war game and irregular miniatures, hovels, QT, war wager. Don't remember those. Dixon, Frycore, Platoon 20, Strategy Max models, Mercenary war games, Second Chance games, Cromwell models, Dragon and George. Uh, Glasgow shop, which lo which loved, uh, Milliart, I think also Glasgow based uh, Scotia micro models. Uh, actually, in terms of the uh, events, there it also mentioned the modelling and paint competitions. That's something I talked about in my review of how I think war game shows might need to have that. Certainly, the modern clay mod doesn't have that as an element. So I was good to look back at the. Adverts, so front rank there, uh, red red in colours, a visit the garden with a ready-made armies. So back in the day, obviously, there wasn't the internet, so you had two ways to purchase models. You could either send off a stamped addressed envelope for lists or see some lists in a War Games magazine. You would write a letter, write out exactly what you wanted, put a check and postal order in, post it off, and the figures would turn up. So these magazines became invaluable if you wanted to purchase miniatures. Of course, you could also go to war game shows to go and visit and uh, buy the models fresh. Now, there weren't obviously many pictures. So the war games magazines also filled a niche of providing pictures so you could have a look at miniatures. Otherwise, it was just take, pay your money, take your choice, take your chance. Now, this was really interesting. So, Walk On 2. So, this was a War Game Show event which lasted the weekend, which looked really interesting. I think it was at the University of Birmingham. A load of traders, loads of shows, uh, late night going up to one in the morning. So, it's perhaps it feels to me like a, a, an attempt to create like an American style show in the UK. And certainly, if something like that was happening today, that's the sort of thing I think I'd like to go to. I had uh, history talks there, military talks, wargaming talks, lots of stuff happening that weekend. Now, this always intrigued me. Deal of war games. do you want to make money? Do you have £32,900? Which uh, is not small change back then. So I think it was kind of set up a franchise for a play-by-email game. Uh, Play by email, play by mail game. Never know what happened. I don't know if anybody ever bought any of those, but it seemed a lot of money. And it, I, as I say, if you want to make a million pound in war gaming, spend two million pound. So there you go. There is a couple of 
more adverts for big players back in the War Games world then. Skytrex, recently purchased by Warlord Games minifigs, which have been bought and getting sold by Caliber Boogs. Essex Miniatures, Dixon Miniatures, another advert there for a Claymore 89 with Dixon going. Certainly looking at this magazine, it feels like Claymore's probably one of the bigger shows in the UK at the time. Now, this is fairly typical for War Games articles at the time. This is part four, War Game and the Ming Chinese. No pictures of miniatures. <laughs> this, even though I read this magazine back to back, front to front, um, cover to cover, this didn't. I think I only read this article once. And it's, it's part of a series, and there was no pictures other than line drawings of some weapons. It was 45 mana, 25 mil. Kind of, it was pictures like this inspired me to try and make some at school. Wargamer types, a bit of a fun look at different wargamers with some some line drones. Uh, an amusing look at some of the prejudices in the hobby um, and some of the prejudices that still exist. About 100 slain, cowboys and Indians. Who doesn't love cowboys and Indians? Um, Bozeman Massacre. And actually... I've got great love of history and obscure history facts, and a lot of the, the stuff in the early magazines that I've gone and looked at is uh, stayed with us. Again, another Austro-Prussian War article. No pictures of any models. Now, Hovels. Uh, museum miniatures, actually museum miniatures, uh, trading out of Bridlington, still Still in the East Riding of Yorkshire, I've noticed when I've ordered from them. Guy Coincident. So this was a hypothetical battle between Japan and Russia. Modern Wars. Again, no pictures and miniatures, but this really caught my attention with the sort of organisational charts. And, and it stuck with us. Huchi, so this is why I got the magazine out. There's not as much detail in as I'd like. There's a picture of a Vietnam village scene using these wild geese miniatures on the front and an advert for some wild geese miniatures, uh, and that's it. And the article wasn't as in-depth as I remembered. High price for Brandy, which was smugglers versus British dragoons. It's a really nice uh, Napoleonic war game figures there. Brief overview of UK copyright law. Uh, interesting thing there to put in a War Games magazine. Design and painting Napoleonic Army. So this was the sort of first painting guide I came across. So you've got a couple of pictures of finished models and some text telling you how to do it. Far cry from jumping on YouTube and being able to see in detail these days how miniatures are painted. Still lots of good tips. That's the second page of the article there. Coming up towards the end, irregular miniatures uh, seem to do everything back in the day. Six mil, certainly I bought loads of six mil stuff as a high school. And this was always an interesting thing at the back of Wargames magazine's classified ad. So you could put classified ad on, I think it was something like 13 pence a word. Um, and you've got everything, people selling collections, painted models, unpainted models, looking for opponents, uh, events coming up. So that is a total harking back to, to the era and the age that was. A War Games Foundry advert there. And that's the second part of the classified ad. So it essentially had three and a half pages of, of classified ads. Uh, upcoming events, yeah, it is really interesting to know how, how the hobbies change across the internet. Finally, the back page is uh, the Connoisseur range uh, figures by Peter Gilder. So if you listen to the Action Gamer podcast, there's a lot of good stuff there about Peter Gilder and his impact on the earlier days of our hobby. So there you go. That was my look back at a War Games magazine. Most of those articles I remember really well and in detail, and it was real joy looking back. Like I said, my key takeaway from it was it's not a lot of pictures in the War Games magazines compared to what we have now. The magazine was 
substantially smaller than the average War Games magazine as laid out now. In fact, while I'm chatting, I'm just going to go over to the table and check how big the magazine was. I'd have done my research. Could have checked that out, couldn't I? So we're looking at 56 pages. But War Games magazines were especially important because of the way we consumed models at the time. It was often the only chance to see some pictures, especially if you couldn't get to shores. It was also a chance to see updated listings, hear about new releases, and uh, more importantly, have the code so you could send off your wee postal order and get some miniatures back after about a month. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this look through my first Wargamer magazine. What was your first Wargamer magazine? Or even what year did you get involved in Wargamer? And I'd, lo I'd love to know in the comments. But I'm going back now to do a bit of work on my Vietnam. Shortly before a load of 10 mil samurai turn up. No doubt I'll chat to you about them in another video. So it's goodbye for now. Goodbye.